Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Pedal cyclist shot but escapes gunman attack. A pedal cyclist may have saved his life when he continued to ride away from a gunman despite being shot. Police said that if the man had not continued riding despite the efforts of the gunman to bring him down during the attack on the Palmer's Cross Main Road in Clarendon on Thursday night, he might not have been alive today. The injured man, a construction worker from the parish, has since been admitted to hospital. No motive has been established for the attack. Police reports said about 8 p.m., the man had just left a bar on Red Road in the parish where he was drinking with friends. While riding his bicycle along the Palmer's Cross Main Road, he was attacked by a man armed with a firearm who opened gunfire at him. Police said he was hit in his left thigh but continued riding his bicycle until he reached an area along Rosewell Road where he fell. He was assisted by residents to the hospital. Police asked Silk Boss to contact Portmore detectives. The St. Catherine South Police are asking Dancehall Entertainer Silk Boss to contact detectives in Portmore. In a statement, the police say they have taken note of multiple videos circulating on various social media platforms which appear to indicate an assault on the entertainer. Silk Boss' given name is Ron Reed. The police say they are also aware of documented events and subsequent video interview given by Mr. Reed. In one of the videos circulating on social media, a man appeared to be hit in the face several times by two masked people. The video caption appears to show the object of the attack being threatened for an offense against Adon. The police say Silk Boss may visit the station which is located on Britain Parkway in Portmore, St. Catherine. Alternatively, they may be contacted at 876 Nine four nine eight four two two. St. James Police named person of interest in space of recent robberies. The St. James Police have listed a person of interest in connection to a pace of recent robberies in the parish. He is Akeem Bailey. At least one of the robberies was caught on tape. In the video being circulated on social media, a man wearing a blue shirt with a red material on his head is seen approaching a gas station attendant before brandishing a handgun. The gunman gestures to the woman to be quiet, but the woman makes a futile attempt to escape. She was quickly caught and robbed of an undisclosed sum of money. It appears that robbery occurred sometime this week. The police are asking anyone with information about Bailey's whereabouts to call the emergency 119 number or the Montego Bay Police at 876-684-9080. Police identify man shot in Westmoreland Operation Firearm Seize. The Westmoreland Police are reporting that a firearm was seized from a man who was fatally shot during an early morning operation in Venom District White House on Friday. Reporters understand that the operation was carried out by police personnel from the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Division Talk. The deceased man has been identified as 20-year-old Anthony Fraser, otherwise called Grand Spen or Papa from the community. Reports are that while conducting the operation at a residence occupied by Fraser, Members of the CTOC team had to force open the front door to the three-apartment boardhouse after the occupant failed to open the door. It is reported that when cops finally breached the residence, Fraser pointed a firearm in the direction of one of the lawmen. The officer took evasive action and discharged six rounds from his Glock service pistol. Fraser collapsed reportedly, clutching the firearm in his right hand. The weapon, a .45 pistol with a magazine containing six rounds, was seized the police stated. Fraser, suffering from gunshot wounds to the chest, was transported to the Savannah Lamar Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Accused in 2016 murder of popular mortician among two wanted men arrested by the police. The wanted man who allegedly killed a popular St. James Space mortician in 2016 has been arrested by the police. He is Joshua Anderson, otherwise called Josh. Anderson is among two men who were taken into custody this week as the police continued their efforts to apprehend wanted mad people. The other wanted man in custody is 48-year-old Howard Brown. Children who witnessed parents beating robbery traumatized children's advocate. Children's advocate Diana Gard Harris says she is grateful that the two children who witnessed their parents being robbed and beaten by gunmen were not hurt. The boys ages 4 and 10 were forced to watch as the gunmen viciously, physically assaulted their mother and father before driving off in the couple's motor car 
leaving the family helpless on the side of the road. The incident occurred on a dirt road in Tollgate Clarendon several days ago. Gardner Harris, while wishing the parents a speedy recovery, believed the boys were affected mentally. I am thankful that there was no physical harm that the boys were subjected to. However, these boys have endured great mental anguish due to traumatic experience that they were exposed to, and this cannot be overlooked, Gardner Harris said. She added, at this time, it's critical that the entire family is supported as they try to process what they have endured. The children advocate also encouraged the family and any other families and children who have endured traumatic experiences to contact Safe Spot, a 24-hour child and teen helpline operated by her office. She said the helpline, which is free of cost, offers ongoing psychological support and general advice with regards to coping after traumatic experiences. Police had reported that the mother received several wounds to her head and hand, while the father got bruises to his lower abdomen and other sections of his body. Along with the car, a 2004 Toyota Pro Box, the gunmen also robbed the couple of their cell phones and other personal items. They were assisted by a passerby motorist to the Maypen Hospital, where they were treated and released. A report was then made to the police. Lawmen found the stolen vehicle abandoned in the tollgate area. It was towed to the Four Pass Police Station and processed, the cops stated. Man injured in Clarendon home invasion. A 32 year old man narrowly escaped death when gunmen kicked open his door and shot him several times in Yorktown, Clarendon on Wednesday night. The man has since been admitted to hospital. No motive has been established for the attack, the police stated. Information reaching reporters are that about 9.30 p.m., the now injured man was in his two-bedroom house when unknown assailants gained entry. The assailants reportedly kicked open his front door, entered an open gunfire, hitting him in his left shoulder, left side, and left leg. The assailants then escaped. It is reported that residents who heard the loud explosions found and assisted the victim to the hospital. The police were summoned and upon their arrival to the premises, observed the front wooden door apparently kicked in and blood inside the passage leading to the bathroom and front bedroom. Upon processing the scene, police reportedly found five 9mm spent casing. Main warns criminals to seize and desist from attack DCS members. The Minister of State in the Ministry of National Security, Xavier Main, says he is hoping some good will come out of the investigations into the recent gun attacks against members of the Correctional Services. He is warning criminals to cease and desist from staging attacks on the Correctional Service members. In recent weeks, there have been two reported attacks by gunmen on the department's vehicle, which at the time were transporting staff. The most recent was last week Saturday in the vicinity of the Spanish Stone Road Examination Depot and other attack on July 30 on Maxville Avenue boat in St. Andrew. In both instances, the officers who returned fire were unharmed. Mr. Min says criminals should know that when you engage officers of the government, they are properly trained, they have sufficient weaponry and equipment, and in keeping with their training, when they are brought under attack, they will respond. He was speaking to journalists following a tour of the Richmond Fire Correctional Center in St. Mary. Opposition urges Health Ministry to be more transparent and consistent in providing monkeypox updates. The Opposition People's National Party PNP is urging the Health and Wellness Ministry to be more transparent and consistent in its update to the country about the monkeypox virus. This as they have been conflicting reports about the country's monkeypox case count. Some media reports indicated that the number of monkeypox cases have increased to seven. Further reports then stated that the number have increased to nine. At the time, the Health Ministry neither confirmed nor denied the reports. In a release on September 2nd, the Ministry said that the country had recorded a total of seven monkeypox cases. Opposition spokesperson on health Dr. Maurice Guy pointed out that the Ministry had promised weekly updates on the virus. He said there needs to be more transparency in the reporting of cases. We have noticed even in the COVID pandemic that there has been very little information that should have come to the public on a timely basis. And as I've said in the past, information such as this seems as if the ministry is hugging it up and hiding it from the public. The minister promised us transparency in terms of that the public will be advised whenever there are any developments. We cannot expect the
the news media to be the ones giving that information. We ought to get it directly from the ministry. So if the numbers have increased, it basically means that the ministry really should be sent out a release to indicate that today we have X amount of cases and um, this is the situation. We cannot wait until every Monday to get the information and updates. So I think it's incumbent on the part of the ministry to release the information to the general public. Education Minister Favor Williams urges parents to get more involved in children's education this academic year. Education Minister Favor Williams is encouraging parents to become more involved in their children's education this academic year. Mrs. Williams, who was speaking during a back-to-school press conference on September 1, said parents have a responsibility to ensure that children avail themselves of the education being offered to them. This, she explained, can only be done if parents increase their level of involvement. We want our parents to be the, that very important stakeholder that they are to understand where their child is in their development and to be able to help them and to be there for them um, in a way that probably they have not been before. We're calling on our parents to increase the level of involvement with our children, with their children going forward for this new school year. PNP demands disclosure on sale of agricultural lands to Michael Leachin. The opposition People's National Party PNP says it wants the government to provide full disclosure of the land and subsequently repurposing of agricultural lands in St. Catherine to Port and Holdings Limited. Port and Holdings is owned by billionaire Michael Leachin and PNP says the land are now purportedly slated for housing development. The call has come from the spokesman on agriculture, Lawton Cousins, and spokeswoman on land and environment, Senator Sophia Fraser Brains. The PNP says the call has come within the context of the recent discovery that approximately 3,000 acres of arable land in Inglewood Village, St. Catherine, initially purchased for major agricultural development by a group of investors, led by businessman Michael Leachin, is being repurposed for housing development. The PNP says it has information that the 3,000 acres acquired by Mr. Leachin and company has irrigation infrastructure, making it extremely high value for agricultural purposes. It says additionally, land zone for agricultural use is per significantly low than land zone for housing. The opposition is concerned that this may have been intentionally designed as a bait and a sweet scheme to benefit private investors. According to the PNP, the government and the Prime Minister who has direct responsibility for housing, must demand that Port and Holdings relinquish its claim to these lands and instead offer them other lands more ideal for housing. It says the government must desist from venturing down this path for allowing private investors to use urban lands designated for food production for what is called exploitative productive generation purpose with no clear national gain. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.